morning, all you many people. It's Pastor Matt. We're excited about Fuse Online. You know it. Say it with me. We're going to sing. We're going to dance. We're going to laugh. We're going to learn. So get ready. Let's go. we've officially entered that weird phase where it still feels like Christmas even though the day has passed. How was everyone's Christmas? I've started packing up all my decorations and cleaning up from, well, all the fun. And I must say, it's a bit of a bummer. I already miss Christmas. Thankfully, there are only 363 days until next Christmas. Besides, we can keep celebrating because we know what Christmas is really about. Christmas means celebrating Jesus. God's greatest gift. That means we have a reason to celebrate all the time. Oh, and I have an idea. I've got all these leftover Christmas cups, and so we can make a Christmas tree because I already took mine down. So, this is what you need. You need 15 cups. You put five down on the bottom, and then you stack four on top of that. I'm not very fast. And then you stack three on top of that. And then you stack two on top of that. And then the last one. Ta-da! Ta-da! There you go. Now you can put the cups up and put the cups down, challenge your family members, have fun, celebrate the winner. You know what? Our memory verse this month perfectly sums up why we celebrate Christmas. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2, 11. Because God loved us so much, He sent Jesus to be our Savior. Jesus truly is the greatest gift we could ever receive. So let's sing this song as we celebrate him together. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth be seen.
Pa-ro-po-pom people! I'm Jake, and it's that time of the year. I've been jingle belling, decking the halls, and going on all kinds of sleigh rides this season. And you want to know why? Because it's Christmas! Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. I love this time of the year because everybody's nicer to everybody else and all the decorations, like, like, the, the Christmas tree. Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Oh, and the stockings. I love you, stockings. And the lights and everything's so beautiful. I love Christmas. Oh, yeah, that's right. I gotta check out this big present over here. There's always something cool in this box every time I open it. Look how cool this box is. And there's something cool in it every time I open it. Woo, so excited. Uh, huh? It's empty. Oh man, I know why the box is empty. I just remembered. Christmas is over. Christmas. Can't believe it's over. No more decorations, no more lights, no more people being nice to each other. There's nothing left to celebrate. No, all that's left is, is to clean up, which is gonna take forever. And then you gotta go through all your gifts and sit down and some of them require instructions, which means you gotta read. And then some of them have to come with batteries. So then you have to go sit in traffic to go to the mall to pick up some batteries. And that's just gonna be a giant waste of time. And breathe, Jacob. Breathe and smile through it. <sighs> or maybe there is something left to celebrate. In today's story, we'll find out what happened after Jesus was born. It's actually really good news. I got some decorations to clean up and a big empty box. Might as well get started. See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter two, verses eight through 20. When Jesus was born, there were shepherds living near Bethlehem. These men and boys lived outside, keeping the sheep safe from wind and storms and protecting them from wild animals. These shepherds were among the least important people you'd meet, living outside and preparing their lentil stew over a campfire. You, uh, you put enough salt in there? Uh, I'll, I'll add more. Now, we don't know how many shepherds were in the fields when Jesus was born, and we certainly don't know their names, but we'll call two of them Cyrus and Zach. Don't you ever get bored? I'm bored. Mm, time moves slower than a snail with a limp out here. You get used to it, youngin. I'm hungry. Yeah, just you keep stirring that stew. It'll be ready soon enough. Being a shepherd was simple enough. Keep your eyes open. For what? Number one, wolves. Number two, thorny brambles. Number three, ditches and ravines. That's it? That's it. I'm still bored. At that very moment, the shepherds were nearly blinded by a brilliant light. Mutton and mashed turnips. What is that? A brilliant angel appeared, towering before the shepherds. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. The shepherds gaped, unable to say a word. It seemed impossible that an angel would appear to lowly men like them. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds were just beginning to get their breath back when suddenly it seemed like all of heaven opened up. A full angel choir appeared, filling the sky. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven. And may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Then, just as quickly as they had appeared, the angels returned to heaven. The sky dimmed. Stars twinkled faintly once more. The shepherds stood staring at each other, their mouths hanging open. Hmm. 
Are you bored now, youngin? No. Well, then let's do this. Uh, we could just go to Bethlehem? Leave the sheep? Number one, let's see this thing that's happened. Number two, especially since the Lord saw fit to tell us about it. Number three, get moving. Yippee! The shepherds hurried to Bethlehem, not stopping for rest until they saw a light glowing on the edge of town. There. Breathless, the shepherds knocked on the door. Boom, 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 boom. A woman opened it. She looked tired, but her face was glowing. Ma'am, um, <clears throat> we've come to see the baby. The baby? You know? The angels told us. Come right in. I want to hear the whole story. Once inside, the shepherds were greeted with a familiar sight. Sheep, chickens, hay, and something less familiar. A tiny baby, tightly wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in the animal's feeding trough. He's so little. Would you like to hold him? The rough shepherds took turns holding the baby, gently as a lamb. The Messiah, the Lord. Right here, with us. When the shepherds finally left, dawn was breaking over the hills. The little town of Bethlehem was waking up. Praise God. <laughs> he sent a savior, a Messiah. Just a tiny baby now, but he's going to make peace for all of us, everywhere. Everyone who heard what the shepherd said was amazed, and Mary kept everything that had happened in her heart to think about over and over. There we go. It's true. Christmas is over. But if you think about it, Christmas isn't just one day. No, Christmas is only the start of something bigger. Listen. When the shepherds heard Jesus was born, the first thing they did was get moving. They had to see for themselves. And when they found out that what the angel had said was true, they got moving again and they told everyone about the baby they'd seen and the good news they heard. And the angel said, it was good news for all the people, by the way. The news was this. In a world full of sadness and pain and fighting and, and anger and deep breath, deep breath, God sent Jesus to bring peace. And the peace Jesus brings can help us get through all the stress and confusion and pain we might see in this world. That is good news. And you know what else is good news? That means the Christmas celebration doesn't have to end after just one day. There's still a lot left to celebrate. Yeah, baby, Christmas! We've got to get moving. Like those shepherds, we got to tell everyone the good news. People need to know this one thing. God's peace is for everyone. It's not something we keep to ourselves. So, maybe there won't be lights or decorations, but we can still be nice to one another. We can still give gifts to show people we love them. We can still sing and we can still celebrate. Boom! Christmas all year! Oh man, I am feeling much better now. The holidays are over, the decorations are in the box, and I am at peace. Still have got a lot of fake snow to clean up. I'll see you around. Merry Christmas! I'm making a bigger mess for myself.
to be the first to know that Jesus had been born. He could have picked a king, a ruler, a wise and respected religious leader, but instead he chose a group of people who weren't considered very important. He chose shepherds to deliver his good news to the world. That shows us that the good news of Jesus is for everyone. When Jesus was born, he brought hope, joy, and love. God's peace is for everyone. Say that with me. God's peace is for everyone. When we trust Jesus as our Savior, we have peace inside that nothing in this world can take away. There are lots of things in life that can make us worried and afraid, but the peace God gives us will help us through those tough times. You can learn more about the peace that God gives us by reading your God Times this week. Download your copy at our website, lifepointchurch.com. Bye, guys! Oh, hey, you're actually still here, and um, uh, Pastor Matt is not. Uh, he usually does this part. Um, you know what, though? He's, he's actually preaching today, so he would want me to tell you to watch it, like, right, um, it's like, I think it pops up, like, right here. I think that's what he said. Um, anyway, uh... Try to get over to Big Church and watch Pastor Matt there. Uh, bye! <laughs>